What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married John. What a mind, love is blind, what a way to do. He is gay, all day she keeps my heart laughing. Never know where her brain is gone. Two each is old. Can he not ask why I married John? The Joan Davis Show. I Married Joan, America's favorite comedy show, starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. We make a lot of money on this affair. Oh, yeah. I suppose everybody will be there. Well, just about. Oh, oh, here's a check from Archie Winslow. He's taking one of the Bennington girls. That good-looking Archie Winslow is taking one of the Bennington girls? Oh, boy, he's really going all out to be charitable. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Hey, which one is he taking? Uh, Lenore, the bow-legged one with the stringy hair and the pasty complexion? <laughs> Don't tell me. Then it must be Lucille. The homely one. <laughs> well, I guess that about does it. Well, aren't you finished with those figures yet, dear? No, Joni, I want to check this record once more. You know how it is with charity organizations. Snide insinuations about mismanagement. Charity going to the wrong people. We, we can't be too careful. Well, anybody who says anything like that just doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah, even members of the Charity League Committee aren't about that sort of talk. Just the other day, Helen Cavanaugh had the nerve Helen to Helen Cavanaugh? To... Uh-oh, is she going to be at the ball? Well, sure, she's on the committee. Why? Brad, I have to have some money for a new evening gown. What? Well, that Helen Cavanaugh will probably be showing off with a very expensive evening gown, and I'm not going to give her the satisfaction of noticing that I'm wearing last year's gown. But, Joni, you said when you sewed on that bowl that no one would notice it was last year's gown. Except Helen Cavanaugh. With her x-ray eyes and photographic memory, why, she'll even recognize the bow. And that's from the year before last. But, Joni, you don't know. Oh, Brad, honey, for 30 or 40 dollars, I could get a beautiful new evening gown. And you'd be so proud of me, dear. And that way, Helen Cavanaugh wouldn't get a chance to make any of her nasty cracks. Would you, Brad, huh? But, Joni, you don't need a new gown. Brad, how can you deny me anything like this when it's so important to me? Especially when I pay less money for clothes than practically any other woman that I know. Joni, are you kidding? Well, no, I'm not. I mean it. I'm very frugal when it comes to buying clothes. Well, sweetheart, for your information, the average woman in our income bracket spends exactly $412 a year for her entire wardrobe. And in this case, you're well above the average. Well, <laughs> for your information, I don't spend anywhere near $412 a year for clothes. Is that so? Listen, uh, I'd settle for that amount, and believe me, I'd, I'd get off cheap. Tell you what, Brad, you give me $412 right now, and I won't ask you for a cent for clothing for a full year, okay? Okay, okay, dear, it's, it's a deal. $412, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll write you a check right now. Now, and remember, dear, no more money, and no fair using your, uh, your charge accounts either. Oh, I promise, Brad. <laughs> but, you know, you're being awful silly. I can buy an awful lot of stuff with all this money. Oh, boy, I won't have to wear any of those old clothes in my closet again. I think I'll give them all away. Well, look, honey, uh, li listen, as long as you're going to give away all your clothes, why don't you call the Charity League, and they'll send a man over, and he'll distribute it to needy people. You know, Joni, I'm just as excited as though we were shopping for me. <laughs> what are you going to buy first? An evening gown for tomorrow night. Clara, look! Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Isn't that breathtaking? Oh, wouldn't I love to walk into the ballroom wearing that? Did you notice the little cap sleeve it had on? It was so beautiful. May I help, madam? <laughs> yes, I guess so. Uh, how much does that dress cost? This, madam, 
It's an original Rouget. All right. How much does it cost? Evidently, madame has not heard about the motto of Rouget's. He says that if you have to ask how much one of his creations costs, you cannot afford it. Besides, this car is really not for sale. We're expecting Mrs. Van Rensselaer, one of our best customers, to take it. Sorry, madame. You can't afford the gown, so let's not waste time looking at it. Joni! Helen Kavanagh. How are you, darling? How are you, dear? You know Clara Foster, don't uh, you? Hello, How Clara. do you do? Uh, Joni, what are you doing in an expensive store like this? Well, I happen to be shopping for an evening gown. Well, uh, you're not thinking of buying this one. As a matter of fact, I am. Well, Joni, don't you have any idea how much a gown like this costs? No, but the way I figure it, if you have to ask how much it costs, you can't afford it. Oh, you're always <laughs> putting on an act. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll show you. Oh, Mater D. <laughs> Mater. Yes, madam. Uh, wrap up the rosé gown. I'll take it, please. Choose me. I'm sorry, madam, but I have told you this gown is from Mrs. Van Rensselaer. It is not available. Oh, I get it. You were just bluffing. You knew you couldn't buy it, even if you had the money. Bluffing, am mm -hmm. I? Uh, listen, I happen to know my rights. Now, that gown is on display, so it must be for sale. First come, first served. I'm the wife of a judge, and I know all... One moment, kind of madame. Fantasy. Suppose I call Mrs. Van Rensselaer. Well, that's better. Bluffing, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Mrs. Van Rensselaer. This is Henri. About this uh, rouge gown. There's a lady here who insists on buying it, and I've told her that... Oh. Oh. Very well. <laughs> you may have the gun. Oh, good. That will be $400, please, with tax. $416.02. and two cents. $416? Well, Joni, you know very well you've never spent more than $25 for a dress. Well, I happen to like this one. And for an extra $400, why be chintzy? <laughs> yes, 100, 200, 300, 400, and 10, Boy, it's dark in there. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm short two cents. That would be all right, madam. Oh, thank you. You can mail it. <laughs> well, it looks like you opened your piggy bank for this occasion. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some more shopping to do. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Helen, and see you at the ball. <laughs> well. Your name and address, please, madam. Well, oh, oh, that won't be necessary. I've changed my mind. I'm not taking the gown. But of course, madame is joking. But of course, I'm not. You see, I only did that to keep that woman who was just here from crowing over me. I'm sorry, madame, but you insisted on buying the gown. Mrs. Van Rensselaer would not have it now after you have refused it. I insist you keep the gown. I know, but... <laughs> but you see, I, I can't keep it. I, why, if I did, I, I, I wouldn't have enough money to even buy a pair of stockings for a whole year. Give me my money back, please. Oh, oh, magnifique. Perfect, ma'am. Well, it's only... Madame, you have ripped the seam. I know my rights, too. Once a customer has damaged a dress, she cannot return it. N'est-ce pas? He's right, Clara. I just messed my paw out of a whole year's clothing. <laughs> Stevens, I'm Frisbee of the West Side Charity League. I'm supposed to pick up some of Mrs. Stevens' old clothes. Oh, yes, yes. We uh, weren't expecting you so soon. I know, but you see, I had another call in this neighborhood this morning, so I figured I might as well make this pick up at the same time. Sure, save time and gas. Follow me, Mr. Frisbee. Thank you. I'll show you where they are. Thank you, sir. Here we are, Mr. Frisbee. Take it all. Everything? Everything. My wife's buying an entire new wardrobe right now. Says she doesn't want to see this stuff again. I still don't see why you had to bring home all these empty boxes. But don't you understand, Clara? If Brad knew that I blew all my money on just this one dress, he'd be furious. Well, all right. He's your husband. I guess you know him. <laughs> I sure do. 
Oh, you know, it's going to be terribly embarrassing to have to call up the West Side Charity League and tell them not to come for my old dresses. Oh, I'm sure they won't mind waiting a year until you get your new wardrobe. <laughs> no, I hope not. Now, don't forget to put on your dress and come over and let me see it. I will, Clara. <laughs> Now, don't forget. Oh, no, no, I won't. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Clara. <laughs> Oh, Johnny, I heard your key in the lock. It looks like you really did some shopping. Well, that's the understatement of the year. Year. I'll bet you spent all of the $412. That I did. <laughs> Here, let me give you a hand. No, darling, I can handle them. They're very light. I uh, just bought some light fall clothes. Like <laughs> Uh, Joni, you sure I can't help? Can I uh, give you a hand putting these? Uh, no. <laughs> no, dear, I can handle them myself. Well, okay, there's there's plenty of room now. Oh, sure. That's one nice feature about this house. It's a nice big closet. I can just push all the other stuff and I can... <laughs> Brad, what happened to all my clothes? Uh, the old clothes? Mr. Frisbee from the charity league decided he'd come around today, so I gave everything away. <laughs> the way you want it. <laughs> Tony, you look like little Jack Horner who sat in a corner. <laughs> Believe me, I feel more like old Mother Hubbard who went to her cupboard. Bear, bear. <laughs> given everything away. You know, it's a lucky thing I was wearing my Snuggies or I wouldn't even have them. <laughs> oh, God, this is awful. How am I going to get through a full year with just this dress and an evening gown? You know, Joni, maybe you could get your old clothes back. I could get those old dresses and put a few new buttons and bows on them and Brad would think they were brand new. <laughs> well, I've got to be getting home. Stop my dinner. Goodbye, Joni, dear. And I do hope you get your dresses back. I'm going to call the Charity League right now. Bye. Goodbye. See you later. Let's see. What was that number? Uh, no. Uh, Riverdale. What? what was that number? Riverdale? Or... Uh, Riverdale. 7800, please. Uh, hello, Westside Charity League. Uh, this is Mrs. Stevens. Say, one of your men was here, a uh, Mr. Frisbee. Yes. Oh, well, will you tell Mr. Frisbee that I want uh, to see him again, please? <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Well, Mr. Frisbee, isn't that the uh, man from the Charity League? Oh, yes. I uh, forgot to give him something, uh, a dress you overlooked. <laughs> oh, well, say, Joni, I'd like to see that new evening gown. Was it expensive? Well, if you call $39 expensive... A lot of money, dear, for one dress. Huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> wait a minute, this dress, Brad. I'll put it on for you right now. It's a French import. No, well, I still say $39 is a lot of money to spend for a dress you're not going to wear more than once or twice a year. I don't know, Brad. I got a feeling I'm going to get a lot more wear out of it than you think. Back away. Brad? Oh, honey, that is gorgeous. You'll be the most beautiful girl at the ball. <laughs> oh, Brad. Do you blame me for buying it now? Yeah, that's $39. That's still a lot of money. I bet there isn't more than two or three yards of material in that gown. <laughs> well, the important thing is, is that you like it, dear. And, well, I'm going to run over to Clara's house. She hasn't seen it on me yet. I'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, Jet Steele. Oh, Mr. Frisbee. Mrs. Stevens said she wanted to see me about something. Oh, yes, uh, uh, yes, a dress that I overlooked. I remember she wanted me to, uh, to give you, but uh, she stepped out. Uh, wait a minute, she brought that one out. It, uh... Oh, this, this must be the one. Mr. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jed. You know, it's wonderful of your wife to make such expensive donations. This dress is going to make some poor woman very happy. Well, Mrs. Stevens is glad to help you. Know? Thank you, Judge. Thank you, and thank Mrs. Stevens for us, will you? Uh -huh. Bye. Goodbye, Mrs. Bye. Stevens. 
Oh, Clara Foster just loved it on me, Brad. <laughs> okay, Brad, I give up. Where is it? Where's what? Uh, the dress I was wearing before, dear. Remember, I put it right on the couch here. Where oh, Mr. Frisbee was just here. The man you called from the charity league. And? Well, he said there was a, a dress that you wanted to give him. That was it, wasn't it? Yes, Brad. That was really it. Well, then when my husband was too sick to work, I, I did a little sewing and a few odd jobs. But it just isn't enough to pay for everything, let alone a new dress. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to help you, Mrs. Foreman. Oh, pardon me for interrupting, but I must talk to you about some clothes. Oh, would you like to donate some to the League? No, I need some for myself. You see, I'm sorry, madam. You'll have to take your place in line and wait your turn. But this is different. There's been a mistake. I insist. Madam, you are hardly in a position to insist. You'll either get in line or leave. What's the matter, dearie? Are you too good to stand in line with the rest of us? We know you're kind. Everything you own is on your back. Probably one of them dance hall hostesses. I am not a dance hall hostess. Then what kind of hostess are you? Well, I'm... I'm Mrs. Bradley J. Stevens, wife of Judge Bradley J. Stevens, and right now I'm really J. Angry. Stevens, wife, oh my goodness. Oh. Mrs. Stevens, I'm awfully sorry. Why didn't you tell me who you were? Well, I tried to, but I couldn't get anywhere except at the end of the line. Well, you just step right over here and tell me what I can do for you. Well, you see... <laughs> well, you see, there's uh, been a terrible mistake. Uh, my husband gave all of my clothes away to this charity, and, well, now I... Uh, this is the only dress I have, the one that I'm wearing, and, well, I just have to have my old dresses back. Well, I'll do the very best I can for you, Mrs. Stevens. Now, I remember Mr. Frisbee bringing in your dresses, and, but they were so nice, they were immediately snapped up. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'll contact the needy persons who received them and explain your predicament. Oh, thank you. But thank I you. must warn you, these women may refuse to return your clothes. What will you do then? Well, in that case, just save my place in the line. <laughs> Dinner served, dear. I'm coming. Joan, are you going to serve dinner in that gown? Well, I want to look pretty for you, dear. <laughs> Honey, you'd look pretty to me, even if you were a flower sack. I wonder if they make them in my size. <laughs> As chairman of this committee, I am happy to announce that the charity ball tonight will net $200 more than the one last year. <laughs> well, the way the League's funds are being mismanaged, we'll need a lot more than that. Mrs. Cavanaugh, to the best of my knowledge, the League's funds have always been handled very conservatively. You have no right to make, make that aspersion. That's not what I hear. I was told there was favoritism shown in the distribution of clothing. Unless you can substantiate those rumors, you, you have no right to give them lip service. Oh, thanks, dear. <laughs> oh, you're having a meeting? Uh, yes, we've been here about ten minutes. We're clearing up some details about the ball tonight. <laughs> Tell me, darling, do you always wear an evening gown to the supermarket? Or are you just trying to impress the new man at the meat counter? <laughs> well, I was anxious to get his opinion. You see, he used to work for Don Loper. <laughs> That's a lovely gown, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. It ought to be. Cost four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars? Joan? Now, why couldn't my name have been Sally or Matilda? Isabel's a nice name. It's pretty fishy when a local judge can spend that much money on his wife's clothes, especially when he's chairman of the committee. Mrs. Kavanaugh, are you aware of the implications of that statement? There's somebody outside, and I wish it was me. Uh, Mrs. Stevens? Yes? Well, I'm Mrs. Biddy. 
And I got these dresses from the West Side Charity League yesterday, and they called me up today and asked me to bring them over to you. Uh -huh. Oh, how do you do? Oh, they're awfully pretty, and I hate to give them up, but I guess if I didn't, I'd never get another stitch down there. Well, here you are, Mrs. Stevens. Goodbye. 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 Now, are you aware of the implication of that statement, Judge Stevens? Judge, I think an explanation would be in order. Well, frankly, I, uh, I can't explain, but I'm sure my wife can. Oh, yes. Well, you see, I, I needed some clothes, so I just went down to the West Side Charity League and told them who I was and how badly I needed those dresses. Mr. Joan, is that your only answer? No, I have to answer the door. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Stevens? Oh, they told me how desperate you were. They were so right. And so I brought back these two dresses, and I threw in one of my own. Oh, well, I couldn't take yours. Now, now, let's not have any false pride. You need it more than I do. <laughs> well, I must get back to my newsstand. Goodbye. <laughs> You're of a good corner. Let me know. No, there must be some explanation. What is this all about? Well, you see, I expected to get a whole new wardrobe, and so I gave all my clothes away to the West Side Charity League. But instead of that, all I got was this one dress. And so I had to have some other clothes to wear, so I just uh, told the West Side Charity League to bring my dresses back. A likely story. Joni. Joni, you left the back door open again. Uh, so you don't believe me, huh, Helen Cavanaugh? In a word, no. Joni, I was here just a little while ago, and have I got a surprise for you. Uh, later, Claire, later, please. Well, I can prove that everything that I say is the truth, Helen Cavanaugh. You just come into my bedroom, and I'll show you that there's not a stitch of clothing in my closet. Oh, but Joni, later, sure, later. Right. later. Oh, well, I, this is the most embarrassing. See, when I tell you something, it's the truth. There. <laughs> surprise. Joni, you know what this means. It's bad. But what are you going to do about it? Well, Brad, I think I have to shorten this one. <laughs> this one needs a new collar. Oh, uh, this one has to be clean. I think I'll dye this one. Joni, you know it was nice of Claire Foster to canvas the neighborhood to get those dresses for you. But it almost got us in a terrible jam. Yeah. Lucky she was here to explain it to the committee. Yes. Yeah. Well, it all worked out for the best. You got all your old dresses back, and the charity league got all the dresses that Clara collected. They got them already? Yes, a man came for them while you were in the shower. Joni, come on, dear. It's late. Joan. Hello, Westside Charity League. Uh, this is Mr. Stevens. It seems that your Mr. Frisbee was here again. Mm-hmm. Empty. Oh, 